All right, my dear, this is now um, Sunday, the 22nd of May. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we've just watched service. We've seen Luke saying, saying goodbye, goodbye and farewell. It's been yeah. sad. But it's also, um, it was great to be part of that service, yeah. even though we're so far away here in Chavuma. Um, and we're so grateful to Luke for his part in inputting into our lives, his part in actually being involved in sending us out here as uh, uh, Tukai Community Church mm. mission partners. And so, yeah, it was a really special service. So, yeah. but we're going to miss Luke. We're going to miss yeah. Luke. Um, but we look but forward to whoever God's going to put in there. He's moving to Southern Cross when hopefully they'll be <laughs> partnering with us <laughs> maybe, as well. <laughs> maybe Southern Cross will also partner with us <laughs> yeah, and so assist we'll us hope. out here. In, uh, we have an ambassador there. <laughs> mm, we, do. we do. We need all the prayer, encouragement oh. and support we can get. Um, How was your week? My week has been very busy and I think very productive. Yeah. We've been uh, um, tired most nights as we went to bed. Yeah. Um, a lot of good. practical work this, uh, this week. Um, not much word ministry, but some exciting hey, things. I did word ministry. Yes, you did work. Yeah, <laughs> look at change. that. Yes. <laughs> Why don't you tell us about your week and how that went? Uh, so Wednesday, um, because we had some guests here, uh, Leslie wanted to organize a ministry opportunity with the Dorcas ladies. Now, the Dorcas ladies are a group of ladies with the Church of the Nazarene who do um, community service for their communities. Okay. So within each church, there's normally a couple of Dorcas ladies and they call them that because they go out into the communities they feed the hungry they take care of the orphans the widows the sick the elderly all those things so uh, they most of them are in the more in the older years as well um, but they are a really servant-hearted woman so on Wednesday morning when they arrived from 9 to 10 I did a little bit of Bible teaching with them I uh, I felt quite challenged because of how much they give of themselves. So uh, I spoke on the widow's might, you know, the mm -hmm. Luke chapter 21 verse 1 to 4, where Jesus compares the rich people coming with their lots of money in the, the basket to the widow with her two mites that she was putting, the copper pennies that she put into the mm -hmm. basket. Um, and I wanted to encourage them to know that it may seem like a little in comparison to other things that people do but what they're doing is of the little that they have they're giving mm. uh, to the communities and Jesus sees that as more valuable and that th it brings glory to him and that it praises mm. his name and I incorporated the Moringa seed with it because we were going to give them a Moringa seed and the Moringa obviously has a lot of nutritional value we wanted to give it to them and help them to grow the Moringa from seed so I was going to instruct them about that but then I thought how can I incorporate it into the message mm. and I thought like because the seed looks so insignificant and and simple but I can then there's all this nutrition packed in there and there's the potential for this whole tree and all that so I pulled that in to say like if this was lying there you wouldn't even know what it was mm. and you would walk past it it's so insignificant but within this there is all this value and I said what they do which is the small things like taking care of an orphan or whatever they might do in their service uh, it m may seem insignificant and small but it's it's packed with all this nutrition, well, all mm -hmm. this value goodness. Yeah. and goodness, um, and the, it brings glory to God and brings people closer to God and so on as well. So Awesomeness, awesomeness. And then we did a pumpkin fritters demonstration. We showed them how to, because they have lots of pumpkins here, but the way they cook their pumpkins is just in the pot with water, um, not even salt or anything like that, but we gave them a recipe to make pumpkin fritters so just by adding a bit of so flour how do you know about how they cook pumpkins i asked them i and told them say? tell me how you cook your pumpkin and oh this lady <laughs> there was one lady who stood up and she's like oh, no she takes the pumpkin she peels the pumpkin she scrapes out all the seeds from the pumpkin then she cuts it up and she puts it in the pot mm. she puts a little bit of water in the pot then she takes some sticks she puts it down she makes a fire with the sticks then she puts her pot on top of the sticks, she puts the lid on, and then she waits. <laughs> she did the whole mannerism. It was so classic. I was like, oh, okay, don't you put salt in? No, nope. she says she just waits for it to cook. <laughs> oh, it was very funny. 
But then uh, we taught them how to make pumpkin fritters and we had them then for lunch mm. uh, together with some shima, which is their maize porridge, uh, and with the pumpkin fritters and then also some relish, which is there with fish mm. and, and tomatoes mm. and things like that. So uh, that was what they had for lunch. Um, and it was a time of fellowship because we could actually mm. talk to them like, what are their needs? Mm. Uh, and it stood out to me that some of them have a lot of their own challenges like asthma and so on, which makes it very difficult for them to do their day-to-day -day tasks and things like that. But they're still in all of those struggles. Mm. They are taking care of orphans. They're going mm. to see the sick. Mm. And yeah, it was very encouraging for me. Wow. I felt blessed just being able to share with them. Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome opportunity, my yeah. love, that you had. To make some new friends, yeah. to minister to those women, uh, not only the word, but also practice. Mm. Um, yeah, so you mentioned the uh, pumpkin fritters. Yes. Right, but um, you you weren't alone in this punk pumpkin fritter thing. No, right? that's Where the thing. Who, who did the pumpkin um, fritter So the, the two guest ladies, um, Debbie and Ronelle, mm. uh, who were visiting here with us, they know how to make pumpkin fritters. So we ha gave them opportunity also so they could uh, teach the ladies the pumpkin fritters. So they came and uh, showed them the recipe and fried up some pumpkin fritters. We had some complications with the recipe because we hadn't put enough flour in, but it <laughs> so got... You we, how not yeah, to do it. yeah, we showed them yeah. how not to do it. But it, in the end, it, w it worked out lovely. And yeah, still um, a nice way to make contact with the people, yeah. to learn a little bit b about them and about their culture. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And I think Debbie and Renal also really appreciated having that opportunity yeah. to be able to share with the ladies. So you guys were using... Um, you met with the ladies outside. In yes. fact, just behind this... Lodge. lodge this, yeah. this this is the lodge, by the way. Um, so this <laughs> when we speak about the lodge, this is it. Um, it's obviously needing a lot of work to prepare for our guests as well. Uh, we're still expecting more guests to come in uh, June. Potentially, it could sleep up to thirty people well, if we had enough beds, beds and, and mattresses yeah. and all that, and if everything was working. Yeah, yeah. But most of the things are not working. So. Yeah. You've been able to this week spend some time getting things ready. What were you up to? Um, yes. So while you were busy um, uh, ministering to the ladies on the other side of the lodge, myself and Mike. Who That's <laughs> who Debbie's husband. Debbie's husband. So it is Mike and Michael. Uh, <laughs> people know me as Michael. So I'm Michael and he took the name Mike for his time here and we tried <laughs> to not be confused while uh, <laughs> we were here, but still some confusion occurred. Anyway, myself and Mike, <laughs> got, Mike, involved and Mike. <laughs> got involved in doing some work here for this lodge in preparing for our next guests mm -hmm. who are coming here. Now, of course, in order for guests to stay in this lodge, they will need definitely showers mm -hmm. and they will need a place to go to the toilet. Mm -hmm. Funny enough, that's a human need. <laughs> Right. Funny enough, eh? <laughs> All of us uh, need those two basic no. requirements. And if we can get hot water, that is Ideal. even a bonus. Yeah. Right? So uh, we've had to look at the plumbing in this house because there's been no pressure, uh, very low pressure. So we've been trying to find out where the pipes run and how we can fix up the pressure uh, in this, in this um, house. We're actually trying to connect this lodge to the tank the header tank mm -hmm. which we have which supplies our own home and the mission base which is just 50 meters behind this building but we had no idea where the pipes run <laughs> and i asked john where do the pipes run and he was very vague in his memory uh, trying to so remember somewhere here somewhere, somewhere here there, there is a valve and i think that's the valve we need to do so we dug around there and we looked and we found a valve, but it wasn't the valve. <laughs> it was a different valve. In fact, it wasn't even an operational. And so we try and we just started digging and digging and following pipes until we could figure out where uh, the supply line comes to this lodge and how we can run. Well, actually, the pipe is already run yeah. from that But to turn it on and to, to get this lodge. Yeah, so but to find the valve that turns it on, we literally had to dig up, I don't know, maybe... <laughs> 40%. So you were Sherlock Holmes this week. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so we found we found the valve eventually, able to turn it on, and its piping is all connected, so we didn't have to fix any of that. Um, 
we had to try and then find a way to make hot water. Mm. Now, as you can see behind me, there is already a uh, donkey, donkey boiler, boiler geyser. Uh, that donkey boiler geyser has been very haphazardly put together, uh, very dangerously put together. Uh, as you can see, it is swollen. So the first time it was used, prior to my coming here, it must have been some years back, the first time it was used, it swelled up and almost exploded. Yeah. And the only way they could stop the explosion, it seems, was to drill a hole in the top of it, which allowed the water to squirt out. And that yeah. hole is still in the geyser. We had to close that hole and then and then figure out the way to plumb it properly. Or, or actually what we wanted to do is put in a pressure relief valve. Mm. It needs a pressure relief valve. But then also deciding what pressure is safe for mm. that particular drum was quite technical. So Mike at yeah. least, you know, he's a land surveyor and he's got some technical experiences and, you know, we were doing some calculations and, um, yeah, we've, we've managed to get something working last night. We tested it and you and I showered there for the first yeah. time the last night. and it night. was absolutely yeah. divine. Hot, hot absolutely water. Absolutely amazing, amazing. It was the hottest water we've had since we've been here, I think, eh? Mm, mm. Yeah, because our geysers at the moment are run from the solar power, so they... Uh, yeah, we, we just have them on for half an hour to an hour and yeah, uh, yeah. therefore they don't necessarily get piping hot. Yes, yes. Yeah. So anyway, our, our current geyser situation at our home in the base is not ideal. Yeah. But that's another story which needs to get fixed up at a different time. Mm -hmm. But right now we've been working here and I think we've kind of got something going. I've also been working on a, on a, a project to make a, a more secure donkey boiler, like mm -hmm. a more legit thing. And uh, I've stripped an old geezer, which uh, has been lying around here. And we're going to use the inside component as the boiler. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to actually put a steel pipe. I managed to find a five inch diameter steel pipe. We're going to put, it through, put the it through the middle of that boiler so we can make a rocket stove boiler oh, it's gonna which be amazing, is going to I use think. less wood and it's going to heat up the, the water faster but that's a project i'm still busy yeah. working on and still has some complications i need to uh, um to overcome yeah um, why are we getting this lodge ready we're getting this lodge ready because there is a group of young people, university students coming from the University of Stellenbosch. Mm -hmm. They are part of the Every Nation Church, which is based in Stellenbosch and it's a university student church. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Waymaker's uh, director, Kevin Taskies, is part of that church mm -hmm. and he's also motivated and a group to come and visit yeah. this base. They come, it's, uh, I suppose with the hope that they would be ignited in their hearts for missions and things like that. So it's maybe like a short-term mission. Short-term missions exposure, um, yes. Yeah, yeah. so they, they, we want to give them an opportunity to be able to, to be involved with some ministry here and get to know what yeah. we're doing. Yeah. But also um, we, we need to accommodate them because yeah. it was going to be nine and now it's going to be probably 14 and the number seems yeah, to be numbers growing. Yeah, growing, yeah. So 14 students plus four adults. Yeah. Um, but the four adults will be housed in the guest rooms which are at the mission base. Yeah. And the students are going to be housed here. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So we still have to sort out yeah. beds, bedding, yeah. uh, mattresses, um, and mosquito nets and everything. So it's very exciting. We, we are looking forward to, to those visitors coming. And um, we know they, they need a place to sleep and to go to the toilet. Yeah. And so we're working on that. But we're also working on preparing ministry for them. So, mm. so how are they going to be involved? Which villages are we going to go and visit? Mm. How are they going to, to uh, get involved in, in ministering to those villages? Mm. Um, we've sent out a questionnaire to them to discover what their gifts are, their strengths, how they're serving in their church. Mm -hmm. So we'd like to see if we can, we can um, orchestrate this in such a way that those who are coming will be blessed mm -hmm. and will be able to bless others by using their gifts yeah. appropriately. Um, so yeah, we're, we, we are super excited about about that. So we also got an opportunity to go to the Mahina base, the forward base yes, uh, down the forward river. Base. It was, so we kind of tried to plan it around the time where Mike and uh, Renal and AJ and them all were here yeah. because it will give, you know, then it's a little bit of an excursion for them as mm. well as us getting the things done that need to be done. Yeah. Uh, and so we needed to go there to help um, 
well to 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 give him some money for for the maintenance of the property mm-hmm. but also you wanted to try and fix the the tank because the 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 uh s- the solar pump, tank, the header yeah. tank for the for the solar uh, pump yeah. is um, was leaking. Yeah. So it was it could have been a simple fix. Yeah. But if the tank was empty, so that tank was full, so you couldn't actually fix yeah. it, but you'd gone with all your tools yeah, to yeah. go and fix it. And then we also were trying to check up on that LARPA area that needs to get fixed because there are a lot of those beams that have been eaten by the wood borer. Wood borer, the yes. Wood borer. Okay. Yeah. So that needs to also get fixed. But it was good to see how they were growing their little vegetable garden there. We were able to get some produce from them. Mm. Um, and we were buying it from them because they don't know what to do with the produce. Uh, but it's something that we've been, uh, uh, Waymakers has been teaching them about different kinds of vegetables. Yeah. Um, and they were not really interested in growing the vegetables. And that's the majority of them are not interested in growing different vegetables because they can't sell it. So they don't know what to do with the vegetables. The local people don't know those vegetables. So like, for example, um, carrots and and uh, broccoli and cauliflower and things. Radishes. They radishes. Yeah. They don't Which even know. We got from them. Huh? Yeah. They don't know yeah. what to do with them. So uh, we said, just grow the stuff. We would we'll buy, buy it. We we'll buy it. Yeah. And we were able to come back with a whole bunch of radishes, which are absolutely delicious. Yeah, so they've done well. They really have done well. So yeah. Johnny Kambulo and Grace, his wife, and Rose. Joseph. Rose's uh, wife. Ra- Rose, Rose, sorry, yeah. Rose. Um, and um, Joseph. Joseph, their son. Um, they that also great. sparked the whole uh, thing because Joseph is in high school, but he's almost finished with high school now, but he's not doing very well. And the main reason for that is because he struggles with English. English is not good, yeah. He doesn't understand most of the, what his teachers are teaching him, which again highlights the, the importance need. and the need for the English teaching. Yeah. So we're thinking along the lines of actually starting the the English teaching in that area of the Mahina, maybe using that as a base and yeah. teaching English from them. Yeah, so that was an exciting excursion to Mahina. Um, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done there to repair and make that place ready because our guests are also going to come there. So mm-hmm. those students are going to go and spend some time in Mahina and they're also going to minister there. They're going to help there. Mm-hmm. So we need to get things ready there as well. Um, uh, for them that's why the water tank also needs to be repaired and that's why the roof needs to be repaired yeah um, although i don't think that's going to be repaired before they come but maybe these guys can yeah. help us with that project yeah. um, another thing i needed to do was to sort out the the pump our own pump here at this base um, oh yeah because it was because it's getting tied up in the reeds it's you know the flotation devices was temporarily set up um and some of the, the 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 ropes and knots and things were coming loose and it was just a little bit of a crow's nest there so yeah. i had to try and sort that out while still staying out of the water f- because we've seen crocs in the water oh nearby yeah. here uh, we've even seen hippos in, in this last water. week we've seen two crocs in the water yeah. and we we've seen we saw hippos lo- not lo- it was it was last not it was week, an yeah. arthur was here we saw hippos yeah but uh, yeah so to try and fix that while not being in the water near the water uh, was quite a challenge and uh, I'll, I've, yeah, uh, it still needs more work, but we'll wait for the, the water to, to recede further because the mm. river has re- uh, uh, receded quite a bit, but it will still recede by probably another five meters, mm. the locals tell me. And so once it's, it's reached its lowest point, then I'll make a more permanent solution for, for that water pump. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's been a very, very busy week. Uh, and productive. Productive. Um, we've done a lot. And yeah, we're, we're, we're grateful to be here, to be able to help in this way. But we're also looking forward to a time where we can actually start steering this work in, in a more guided direction. Yeah. But I think the time for that will come when the time is right. I right now, it's still a time for discovery. Yeah. Um, last, last week, we spoke about uh, discovering John's heart and John's passion. And we're still in that discovery process. I think it's going to take a while. Um, and we just need yeah, to keep on having a, a, a positive attitude and keep on discovering, absorbing yeah. as much as we can, like a sponge. Steve Rockwell used to tell me that, be a sponge, be a sponge, <laughs> absorb as much as you can. <laughs> but I also think that uh, the t- there are lots of times where we have things to be grateful for. So we go through challenges, but 
in times like this week, for example, where there were so many productive things that happened, and we can look back over the week and we can say, this was this was a good productive week, and we got a lot of things done. Um, those are the things we have to be thankful for, mm. because there are some some weeks that it just feels like you're you're stuck in the mud a little bit, and then it's hard to to find things to be thankful for. But these are like the highlights, the the good weeks where you can say like this this is yeah. something we can yeah. be thankful for. Yeah. What we didn't mention was that we got a chance yesterday to go and see the Makishi dancers. Oh, the Makishi, yes. Last the and Mishishi final thing. The Makishi dancers, yeah, that was super exciting. Hey, I mean, yeah, I think it can can be quite scary and intimidating, but it was it was good for us. Uh, to be able to ex find explore this part of the Luvali culture yeah, it's something yeah. quite part of their traditions and it's a build up actually for a big uh, traditional celebrations that Later happen in, in August, August yeah. so um, we th this was just sort of like a, a small bit of it but uh, yeah it was it was great to yeah. to see it and experience it some really um, interesting masks that yeah. they've got and they try and intimidate yeah. people because it really it's, it's, it's like a fundraising event also yeah. So they intimidate the people. No one knows who's behind the mask and if yeah. it really is somebody there or, or what's <laughs> moving this mask. And uh, But they intimidate the people until they give them some money. Once you give them some money, you'll go and trouble somebody else. And <laughs> that's really what they did for us as well. Um, yeah. Although when we first arrived there, we, we spoke to the chairman of the whole event and he came and explained to us everything that was going on. We weren't allowed to use our cameras until until um, we had we'd given chatted some money. to them and given them a donation also to to their event. This all is also part and parcel of a inauguration of the new chief, the new mm. Lavali chief on the West Bank here. Um, and uh, it will also be incorporated into the, the uh, Mukanda uh, ceremony, ceremony in which August. occurs in August, which is the culmination of the circumcision time for the men mm. um for the boys becoming men that's part of their their celebration annually mm. um well that's yeah. really what we've discovered up to this point but we're still discovering more and so more it's a time of discovery yes. lots of learning we're learning about the culture we're learning the language and um rainford who works here on this property was really really a star yeah. to introduce us to that and to take us there and escort us and yeah. and describe some of the things so we're really really grateful it's been a great week uh, we thank you for your prayers. We thank you yeah. for your support. Uh, please continue praying for us. And um, yeah, we love you lots. We miss you and look forward to a time when we can come and visit and see you. And also we look forward to a time when you might be able to come and visit us here. You yes. know, we're busy re preparing showers for you <laughs> and uh, accommodations. So there is enough place. Please come visit us. It would be great. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. Bye.